Physics Lab 123, Sections 1 and 2. Week 2, the lab for this week will be called, uh, that you'll be doing through Pivot Interactives. It's called Copy of Lab 1, An Introduction to Studying Motion, the Ping Pong Ball Bazooka. So essentially, you're going to be doing the exact same lab you did for week one, except this time you're going to actually try to get the correct answers. Um, so week one was just uh, an attempt to get you to familiarize yourself with getting into the program, finding the lab. So this will be the lab that you'll do for this week. Uh, I'd like to know if the class is interested in the idea of actually doing this lab instead of on Tuesday, doing it on Friday, because I see that your uh, syllabus for your lectures um, actually cover the topics related to these labs and maybe you want to have the lecture first before you do the lab or maybe you're fine with having the labs done first and then you hear uh, Dr. Simison's lecture. So uh, give me some feedback and let me know what you think. Um, so I imagine if you didn't have any, any lecture at all you'd be a little confused why are we doing these kind of labs. Well, the first thing they want, want to do in physics, they want to familiarize you with the terminology, things like velocity and acceleration, uh, displacement, words that you may use differently in your common everyday uh, usage. Uh, they have specific meanings in physics and they have mathematical relationships. So just to give you a, a starting place in physics, you got to have to learn some of the language and familiarize yourself with certain concepts. So motion, and how motion is dealt with. Um, essentially, I, I assume that you understand how to answer, for this part one, you understand how to answer questions one through three, okay? Uh, I don't know, uh, in terms of theoretical knowledge, uh, for question number four, part one, uh, do you know how to determine the speed of the ball? Uh, the speed of the ball is just simply the distance a ball travels divided by the time. So. Uh, in our tools that they gave us, they gave us a centimeter scale and a second watch. So um, what you do is you go up to the tools and uh, you have this scale. I just clicked on the scale. I assume you can see that. And uh, you might also want to click on this icon to make this thing full sized uh, for your screen if you have poor eyesight like me. Uh, if I click on it again, the scale goes away. I can make the scale come and go, come and go by clicking. Um, so if something is wrong with your scale, you can destroy it and recreate it. Okay, and you can move it around. I believe these this red dot is nothing more than a position holder. You know, you can put a whole bunch of them on here and use them to, uh, uh, you know, this happened here, that happened there. So it's just a marker. Uh, you know, whether you, if you find that helpful, fine. Okay, or you don't have to use them. Uh, I could see where it might be helpful, especially if you had a number of things going on. And they have a stopwatch, so I just clicked on that icon. Uh, the stopwatch, you can always reset it by hitting this L. So you'll see, for example, if I to make this thing move, if I, I just click the, uh, the play on the bottom, can you see that? Let me change my camera a little bit down. Okay, make sure you can see that. So I hit the play right here on the bottom. I don't know if you can see it. That's play. And if I were to refresh it, it's go back to the beginning. If I if I drag this, right, if I drag this, I can just kind of make it go to whatever frame number I want. So right there, right there. See, you can see now if I click on either of these two, I can make it go forward incrementally or go backward. If I hit my keyboard, the right arrow or the up arrow makes it go forward. Back arrow or down arrow, I make it go backward. Um, now you see there's a, there's a time on there. I could make that, I could reset that to zero if I want to. Bam. Now it's back to zero. So how would you do the speed of the ball? So we're assuming that the ball, as soon as it leaves the cannon, the speed of the ball is consistent from this point all the way to the can. Uh, we know in real life the ball is slowing down a little bit. So this speed is really an average speed. Um, but it's going to be close to, uh, the speed will be relatively consistent for a short period of time. Um, so how would you do that? Well, what you do is you increment it back, increment it back, take your little scale, 
and I'm lining up the, the scale right here, the edge of the scale right there. The edge of the scale is not in the same place where this blue line is. Don't be, don't be fooled by that. Okay, now I'm going to hit and take the clock. I'll, I'll reset it to zero. And then I'll just increment it forward a little bit. Maybe two or three or four places. Okay, I did four. You can do more than four, but before you hit the can, okay? Now here's the leading edge right here. It's right about there. So guess that you can guesstimate the distance there, and now you have the time right there. How many seconds? So you just take the distance and divide it by the time. And that's it. That's how you determine the speed. Um, so they want you to kind of play with these uh, these uh, various tools. You know, this you can, if I'm, I'm hitting this, you can see you can, uh, some of these things you can rotate. In this application, this would not be helpful. Let's say if you rotate it by accident and you goofed it up, I would just kill it and then reestablish it and then regrow it. That's what I would do. Um, you know, if something is if something is uh, off and you want to just fix it, you can just kill it and then re redo it. Um, so I'll do two more, at least two more lectures uh, for this uh, lab, which we're calling Lab One, uh, and those two lectures will deal with Part Two of this lab and then with Part Three. So I'll just deal with some of the issues I think you might have. And uh, so, so, so submit that to me, uh, you know, next Tuesday, unless we, we decide we're going to do a Friday class, and in, in which case you've just bought yourself some time, and uh, you'll hear some of uh, Dr. Simison's lecture on this topic, which you may find helpful. Um, call me anytime you have a question, please. Uh, feel free to call me.